Grabozinski. Today I'm going to take a look at some charts. Uh, charts, or graphs or diagrams that are commonly used in health service management. I'm going to give you a few definitions around what you see in an average chart and I'm going to take some examples from the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare's Australia's Health 2014 and walk you through a line chart, a bar chart or histogram and a pie chart. I'm then going to take you to Excel, show you how to do those simply, and also at the same time I'm going to outline for you how to interpret some of these charts, how to avoid some of the pitfalls of interpretation so that you can better represent them in any management forum that you use them for. So let's begin. As I said, I am using the Australian Institute in Health and Welfare's document found at aihw.gov.au and I'm using the Australia's Health 2014. You'll see at the moment it is in their feature publications on the front page, but if it's not, just type in Australia's Health into the search engine and you will find it. So click on that link. You will see it takes you to initially the PDF version, now for, but for today's uh, exercise, I'm going to use the online report. So click on online and it takes you to the table of contents. I'll reference the chapters as we go through. So what I'd like to look at first is a line chart. To do that, I want to look first into Chapter 2, Australia's Health System. Scroll down till you get to Figure 2.10. And here we're looking at our first line chart. Allocated health expenditure per person by age and sex in the year 2008 and 9. Up the top of every chart, you should find that there is a title. The title tells you what you are looking at inside of this line chart. Every chart that we're going to look at today is made up of data. Data is the raw information which you've probably most often seen in table form that tells you not a lot. The representation of data in a chart is meant to make it more informative. So what we have here is on our left hand side an axis. This is called the x-axis and down the bottom we have the y-axis. In mathematical terms everything that we look at here is positive. As you go vertically upwards on an x-axis is positive and horizontally along the y-axis these are positive values. If you were to continue these down horizontally and vertically, they would be going into negative axis, but you don't often use those in health service management. So in this chart, we are looking at on the left hand side, the number of dollars spent per person. You know that via this label up here, which labels the X axis. And on the Y axis, the label says age group in years, zero to four, 5 to 14, etc. Inside, we see these two lines, thus the line chart. The labels are represented here, green for males, orange for females. And here are the actual lines of the line chart. And as you can see, while you're interpreting this one, that the expenditure per person is higher in the birth years. It drops in 5 to 14 and then begins to rise over the lifespan. It begins to increase at about 45 and then go up significantly higher over time. Now, if we were to say we needed to look at one particular point and ask the question, how much was spent on average per person for a 65 to 74 year old male, you would then go to the y-axis and say 65 to 74, we go up to the line and that is the point, the point that we are referencing as our data point. And then we take that back to the x-axis and it says we spend $8,000 per person in that age group. Now that's the significant importance here. Let's go and make some quick judgments about this. One of the, the standard rules for identifying a trend in a line chart, you really do need to have a look at more than one or two data points. I usually like to say that 
six to seven data points in a continuous direction, either upwards or downwards, is a trend. Now, if you look at this data set, clearly it has gone up for several data points. You will increase your expenditure as you get older. Let's take a look at another chart. I'll just go back here now. Let's go to chapter seven, Indigenous Health, and we'll go down to figure 7.3. Here we're looking at a chart, which as you know in the title says Indigenous and Non-Indigenous Infant and Child Age 0 to 4 Mortality Rates for New South Wales, Queensland, West Australia, South Australia and Northern Territory in 2001 and 2012. What it's looking at here is the, as you can see from the label, infant deaths per thousand live births on the x-axis and over which year, 2001 to 2012. On the left, we have Indigenous infants in the green line, non-Indigenous infants in the orange line. So if I am looking at this graph and I was to say, do I have a trend? Yes, I, I think I do. I think I could say I have easily six to seven data points and decreasing infant mortality from 2005 to 2010 uh, for infant deaths per thousand live births. If I have a look at that, I'll say there is a much slower decline in non-Indigenous deaths for, for infants. Now, you always need to, when you're looking at graphs side by side, a comparison of what the axis is saying. If you look at the data points here, the scale is only increments of two. If you look at this one, the scale is increments of 50. You, you have a significantly different rate in mortality from infants to child deaths. Let me give you an example of how to create a line graph in Excel and show you about the differences in the scale. Here I have a simple data set for a made up hospital. To make this chart in Excel, you simply highlight the selected data and the title that you want, go to insert. In the new Excel version, recommended charts is really good. Otherwise, just choose line chart. Recommended chart, as you see, it will always recommend you a, a line chart for this kind of data set, um, which is good uh, in health service management because this is the one that we most commonly use for our quality improvement and finance monitoring. Click OK. And there we have it, a very simple line chart for hospital-acquired infections. Now, if I just slide this one over to the side, and insert the same chart one more time. By copying and pasting. Let me just modify the axis here to say, let's say the maximum unit, the maximum scale goes up to 100 and the units are at 10. If you have a look at these two graphs again, you see that it really does look like here that there are less hospital acquired infections and the rate of decrease is much lower. Whereas the representation on a different scale of only up to 40 with units of five appears to be I have a better reduction in hospital acquired infections. So that's line charts. Let's go back contents page and let's have a look at bar charts. Bar charts are also known as uh, histograms. Let's go to chapter 2, Australia's health system, figure 2.3. Here's a bar chart. Now a bar chart is a representation in much the same way that we have in a line chart. However, you would use a bar chart when you are making a comparison between different services or countries, as in this graph, as opposed to looking at a trend over time. Now let's just go through this chart again. This bar chart shows the health expenditure as a proportion of GDP in selected OECD countries in 2011, the title. The labels say that on the x-axis, the health to GDP ratio percent spent and then on the y-axis the country. So 
What you can see here is that you're able to highlight Australia and what's the data point for Australia? If we take the Australia from the y-axis, we go up to the top and we draw a line back to the x-axis, we can see that Australia's GDP expenditure is currently 9.5%. Let's go back to the Excel and say, have a look at how we would make a bar chart. Let's just use the same data. So if I was representing these hospital acquired infections, I'll go to insert. I will just choose bar chart from my list. And then you can see the bar chart is exactly done the same way. X axis, number of infections, Y axis, the month that they occur. Let's just say that we wanted to add to this some point labels. Click on the bars, right click, add data labels, and there you go, are the point labels. You can do the same thing in line charts as well. Okay, let's move on to a circle chart. I'll go back to my contents page and go to first chapter five. Let's go down to figure 5.2, smoking status. This is sometimes called a circle graph, circle chart, a sector graph, sector chart, or a pie chart. I think it's fairly easy to see why it's called a pie chart. In this pie chart, it shows in the title that there is a smoking status in 2011-12, and it shows different sectors. Now, what this represents is 100% of the population. Now, the percentage is represented in the circle by the arc around the outside. So you can see that there is a smaller portion or piece of pie who is an occasional smoker, a slightly larger proportion who is a person who smokes daily. And then there is a proportion which is the never smoked, which is, as you can see, greater than half or greater than 50%. Pie charts really are the best used for looking at a percentage of an entire group or population, such as in this situation where it is looking at the percentage of people who are smoking, occasional smoking, ex-smoker or never smoked. Let's go to have a look at another pie chart. Um, I'll go back to chapter two. In this pie chart, it's really a great example of the health funding responsibility. But it also illustrates for you that looking at proportions of a pie, there is a really a limit to how much is useful. So in this chart, it shows you the responsibility for funding at the release date of this document. 40.4% was hospital funding, 38.2% was primary healthcare funding, and other recurrent funding was 21.3%. Three segments. If you look outside of this to the next segment of the pie chart, it shows you that the in arc proportion, the percentage of public hospital services is greater than the percentage of private hospital services within that 40.4%. Any more than six, the pie chart starts to become harder to read. And that's why I point out this one, not to criticize the Australia Institute in Health and Welfare, but you can see then you have to refer to the chart, to external labels, to see the different elements that you are interpreting. In here, public hospital funded by Australian government, states and territories, private funding share. Let's go and now construct a pie chart. Back to my Excel sheet. Here you see I have a very basic data set. Percent of, I will highlight that. Insert, you can see you could go to the choose of your pie chart or just take recommended. And of course, it recommends you a pie chart. Click OK. Again, if I want to add data labels, I'll just right click, see data labels in the menu, add data labels. So that's all I wanted to cover today. Let me leave you with a couple of exercises. Thanks very much for watching my video. I hope this has been helpful and getting you to understand some of the basic charts, uh, and particularly in the context of health service management. Any questions, please let me know.